He was about to become a priest, but the little boy sees something unusual about him and stops the ceremony. In an eventful day at the church, a mysterious child warns a congregation of priests that one among them, a sinner, will die that day. The congregation is initially divided and disturbed by the prophecy. Later, the death of an unknown priest shocks everyone. In the solemn sanctuary of a grand church, an unusual congregation of ten priests, each representing a different city district, convened for a critical meeting. Among the clergy were Father Alberto from the Northern District, renowned for his wisdom, and Father Miguel from the bustling city center, known for his resolute faith. They were joined by Father Jorge, a scholarly priest from the Eastern District, and Father Jose, a soft-spoken man from the West, among others. Their solemn deliberations were abruptly interrupted by a child, no more than eight years old. This cherubic figure, with his head barely reaching the waist of the gathered priests, was named Pedro. With a peculiar solemnity, he delivered a chilling prophecy. One among you, a sinner, will die today. The profound silence that followed was a stark contrast to the reverberating echo of Pedro's words. The congregation was startled, their eyes wide with surprise and disbelief. Father Alberto, Miguel, Jorge, and Jose exchanged uneasy glances. Father Alberto, a beacon of wisdom, was the first to break the silence. He reasoned, perhaps the child's words carry a divine message we must heed. His serene countenance brought some calm to the gathering. On the other hand, Father Miguel, a man of unwavering faith, took a different stance. This child's presence here, his words, are a sign of malignity, an attempt to disrupt our faith in unity, he declared, his voice firm and steely. This spurred a heated discussion among the priests. Father Jorge, ever the scholar, argued, We cannot disregard the child's prophecy outright. We must ponder its meaning and implications. His scholarly approach didn't entirely convince the others, leading to further debate. Father Jose, usually reserved, surprised everyone by voicing his support for the child. We've been taught to listen to the voiceless, the small, the innocent. Perhaps we ought to listen to Pedro, he gently suggested, his soft voice barely above a whisper. Amidst the debate, Pedro stood silently, his innocent eyes watching the scene unfold. The prophecy had been delivered, and the echo of his words hung heavy in the air, inciting a mixture of fear, suspicion, and awe among the priests. The gathering, initially meant to be a meeting of unity, had turned into a crucible of doubt and division, all instigated by the chilling prophecy of a child. Just as the sun began to descend, painting the sky in hues of orange and red, the cardinal's carriage rolled into the church courtyard. Cardinal Raphael, a figure of utmost reverence and authority, stepped out, followed by his entourage. He was a man of advancing years, his face etched with wisdom and experience, and his eyes a testament to the countless souls he had guided toward the light of faith. The church bells echoed through the city districts, announcing the cardinal's arrival. Despite the turmoil caused by the child's prophecy, the priests hurriedly fell into their roles, hoping to maintain the decorum of the ceremony. Fathers Alberto, Miguel, Jorge, and Jose, along with the others, lined up to greet the cardinal, their faces a mask of composure hiding the underlying apprehension. The ceremony unfolded as planned, a tableau of deep-rooted tradition and somber prayers, the church filled with the harmonious chants of hymns. Yet beneath the practiced normalcy, the atmosphere was thick with unease. The child's ominous words, One among you, a sinner, will die today, hung over the congregation like a dark cloud, the prophecy echoing in each corner of the church and in the hearts of the priests. Cardinal Raphael, despite his advanced age, didn't miss the discomfort that permeated the air. His keen eyes observed the forced smiles, the relentless glances, and the slight tremble in the voices of his priests. He was aware that something was amiss, yet chose to maintain the sanctity of the ceremony, his faith unwavering amidst the unsettling ambience. Father Alberto, the wise, couldn't help but glance at Pedro, the child prophet, who stood quietly at the back of the church. His small figure seemed out of place amidst the grandeur of the ceremony, yet his prophecy held a power that challenged even the strongest of faiths. 
Father Miguel, the resolute, watched the congregation with suspicion, his eyes flitting between the faces of his fellow priests. The child's prophecy had sown seeds of doubt in his heart, making him question the sanctity of those around him. Father Jorge, the scholar, couldn't shake off the child's words, his scholarly mind analyzing every possible interpretation of the prophecy. Meanwhile, Father Jose, the soft-spoken, couldn't help but feel a pang of fear, his faith challenged by a child's unsettling prediction. As the ceremony concluded, the priests dispersed, each carrying the weight of the prophecy in their hearts. The arrival of the cardinal, which should have been a cause for celebration, had turned into an evening of discomfort and suspicion, the child's prophecy casting a long, dark shadow over the church. As dusk fell, the priests, still shaken by the child's prophecy, resolved to stay overnight at the church. The grand edifice, which usually echoed with prayers and hymns, was eerily quiet, every creak and rustle amplified in the silence. The church, a symbol of faith and protection, had transformed into a haven of uncertainty and fear. A few members of the congregation, driven by their concern and curiosity, offered to keep vigil. They huddled together in the church's main hall, their whispers punctuating the silence, each word reflecting their shared apprehension. The priests retired to their respective rooms, each one cloaked in a strange sense of foreboding. The moon traversed the night sky, its pale glow seeping through the church's stained-glass windows, painting the interior in a spectral light. The hours ticked away, marked by the church's ancient clock, its chimes echoing in the stillness of the night. Yet the congregation's vigil remained unbroken, their eyes heavy with sleep but their minds alert to every sound. As dawn broke, coloring the sky in shades of pink and gold, a young member of the congregation, Eduardo, was sent to rouse the priests. When Eduardo reached Father Jose's room, he found the door ajar. Hesitant, he pushed it open, only to recoil in horror. Father Jose was sprawled on his bed, his face pale and lifeless. The church erupted into chaos as the news of Father Jose's death spread. The priests, each battling a wave of shock and fear, rushed to the room. Father Alberto, the most experienced among them, confirmed their worst fears. Father Jose had indeed passed away. The local authorities arrived soon after, their presence adding to the grim reality of the situation. The cause of death was revealed to be a heart attack, the words echoing ominously in the church's hallowed halls. The child's prophecy had come true. The sinner had met his end. And the church, once a beacon of faith and hope, was now a place of uncertainty and death. The congregation, their vigil ending in the most tragic of ways, left the church in silence, each carrying the burden of the prophecy and its fulfillment. The priests, in their grief and shock, could only marvel at the accuracy of the child's prediction, their faith tested in a way they never thought possible. Father Jose's sudden death left the church and its community in a state of disarray. The prophecy, once dismissed as the ramblings of a child, had come to pass in the most unsettling manner, challenging the very foundation of their faith. The church, once filled with hymns of praise and joy, now echoed with a haunting silence, a testament to the prophecy's dark fulfillment. The local public officials arrived to investigate the unsettling incident that had befallen the church. As they delved into the deceased's identity, a shocking revelation emerged. The man they had known as Father Jose was, in fact, Jose Vargas, a notorious criminal with a history of severe mental illness. Vargas had been diagnosed with dissociative identity disorder, a condition marked by the presence of two or more distinct personality states. Each of these identities had their own perceptions, thoughts, and emotions, heading to a disoriented and fractured reality for Vargas. He had been confined to a psychiatric hospital after a series of dangerous offenses, but had managed to escape, evading the authorities with his chameleon-like ability to assume different personas. The congregation and the priests were left aghast by this revelation. The man they had welcomed into their church, their community, was a wolf in sheep's clothing. Father Alberto, in particular, was stunned. He had spent countless hours with Vargas, sharing prayers and religious discussions completely oblivious to his true identity. The news of Vargas's criminal past rippled through the congregation, each member struggling to reconcile the image of the devout priest with that of the dangerous criminal. 
The church, which had been a sanctuary, had unknowingly harbored a malevolent presence. The prophecy of the child took on a chilling new context. The sinner, the child had foretold, was not merely a spiritual transgressor, but a man with a sinister past and a dangerous propensity for harm. The words that had been dismissed as the ramblings of an imaginative mind now stood as a stark warning that had come to pass. Confusion, fear, and betrayal swept through the church. The community was left questioning their judgment, their faith shaken to the core. The serenity of the church was replaced by an unsettling tension, the echoes of the child's prophecy lingering in the minds of all. The police continued their investigation, their presence a stark reminder of the deceit that had infiltrated their sacred space. As the congregation grappled with the shock, they couldn't help but ponder the words of the mysterious child, for his forewarning a haunting memory in the light of the grim reality. Jose Vargas's death marked the terrifying chapter in the church's history, exposing a dangerous reality they had unknowingly been a part of. The congregation, once united in faith, was now united in a shared sense of disbelief and apprehension, their sanctuary tainted by the memory of the imposter who had walked amongst them.